AMD CPUs have been killing it of late. But what about the GPUs? In today's video, we're going to take a look at their latest ultra budget offering, the Radeon RX 5500 XT. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to Tech215. I'm your host, Nick. And in my hand right here is AMD's latest ultra budget offering, the Radeon RX 5500 XT. Right now, the GPU war between Nvidia and AMD is absolutely heating up. Obviously, the Polaris line of GPUs like the RX 570, 580, and 590 were absolutely awesome. Can they repeat that success with their brand new line of RDNA 7 nanometer GPU? That's what we're gonna get into today, guys. We're gonna run some synthetic benchmarks like Unigen Heaven and 3D Mark V. Strike. We're going to benchmark some games, we're going to throw out a couple softballs like Fortnite and Apex Legends and then move on to some more graphically demanding titles like Assassin's Creed and Forza 4. If that, we're going to hop on Twitch to see how this thing streams in real time. Then we're going to see how it performs in the real world by rendering and editing some 4K footage in Adobe Premiere Pro. Before that, please remember to hit the subscribe button. I put videos out once a week, everything pertaining to PC budget tech. So with all that out of the way, Let's see what's under the hood of the brand new Radeon RX 5500 XT. The ASUS Dual OC RX 5500 XT is AMD's latest ultra budget offering. Released on December 12th, 2019 for an MSRP of $179.99, a very similar release price of its older cousin, the RX 570 4GB. It features AMD's 7 nanometer architecture, codenamed RDNA, the die measures in at 158 millimeters squared and comes packed with 64 billion transistors. The ASUS Dual OC model shown here has a base clock speed of 1647 megahertz, a game clock speed of 1733 megahertz, and a boost clock speed of 1845 megahertz. It also features 1408 shading units, 88 texture mapping units, 32 ROPs, and 22 compute units. As far as memory goes, the RX 5500 XT features 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 128-bit bus with a combined memory bandwidth of 224 gigabytes per second. It's a relatively easy card to power, only outputting a total TDP of 130 watts and requires only one 8-pin power connector. The rear I.O. features one HDMI and three display ports, and the card offers PCI Express 4.0 support, but in all honesty, it couldn't saturate PCI Express 3.0 by a long shot. The RX 5500 XT supports DX12, OpenGL, OpenCL, and of course, the Vulkan API. The card also supports AMD's FreeSync 2 with HDR support, and also AMD's Relive Capture for those who want to capture and record their own gameplay without the need for a dedicated capture card. On our test bench today, we'll be using the Ryzen 7 3800X, 32 gigs of G-Skills Trident Z Neo clocked at 3600 MHz, our game drive is a 1TB Samsung Evo 860 SSD, and it's all sitting on the X570M Pro 4 motherboard from ASRock. And guys, just as a point of reference, we'll be comparing the 5500 XT to the RX 570, its much older cousin, and the GTX 1660. Alright, it's benchmark time, and we're starting with Unity in Heaven, where the 5500 XT put up 126 FPS and a score of 3182, smoking the RX 574GB by 20 frames and 600 points, very impressively keeping up with the 1660, only a few FPS behind. Moving on to Firestrike, where the 5500 XT scored a 12,562 overall, beating the RX 570 by around 800 points, but falling behind the 1660 by around 2,000. On the games, and let's run some easy ones first, we got Fortnite at 1080p, epic settings. The 5500 XT averaged 85 FPS, beating out the 570, and once again, having a very impressive showing, only a few frames behind the 1660. Apex Legends is next, where the 5500 XT showed its most impressive mark of the day, competing neck and neck with the 1660 and wiping the floor with the RX 570. 
So now let's take a much tougher game to run Assassin's Creed Odyssey where on very high settings the 5500 XT hit an average of 55 FPS beating the RX 570 by 13 and falling just short of the 1660 by 9. Finally Forza 4 on ultra settings the 5500 XT averaged a smooth 93 FPS not too far behind the 1660 at 101 but absolutely demolished the RX 570 at a respectable 62 FPS. So now let's hop on Twitch and see how the 5500 XT handles streaming duties and for the most part the 5500 XT paired very well with the 3800X. I wouldn't match these cards together for a build myself as the Ryzen 7 3800X will indeed bottleneck the 5500 XT, but that is to be expected. I think this card would make the most sense being paired with a Ryzen 5 or a newer i3 or i5. Moving on to Adobe Premiere Pro, editing, rendering, and encoding, scrubbing through the timeline was just okay, but in all honesty it just doesn't have the horsepower that Nvidia has with their H.264 encoder. It's just not fast enough for my personal likings when it comes to rendering and exporting. AMD makes fabulous CPUs for editing, but they are just not anywhere close to Nvidia's H.264 NVENC encoder on the GPU front, so if you plan on editing with this type of budget, you'd be much better served getting the new 1650 Super or the 1660. Also keep in mind that Nvidia cards maintain their value over AMD, very similar to how Intel does over AMD CPUs. And finally, on the stress testing our GPUs and testing temperatures using Furmark, the 5500 XT actually scored the highest with a 4579, the 1660 scored a 3942, and the RX 570 scored an 1185. So as far as temps goes, it looks like that 7 nanometer architecture is a real advantage here for AMD. Alright guys, so that was my look at the Radeon RX 5500 XT, and it's time for my final thought. So let's start with the good. The things I really like about this car is it's decent value for the price. It's a great 1080p card. It performs very similar to an RX 580, but it has a few advantages. It's way more power efficient. It offers GDDR6 memory over the GDDR5 of the 580, and it actually clocks faster than the RX 580. And it's newer architecture. It uses the seven nanometer architecture, so it's gonna run a lot quieter and cooler as you can tell from our test. But what I didn't like about the card, and it's honestly only one thing, and that is if you're a content creator, AMD has to get with it. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of good things about their encoders. I just haven't seen it yet in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the program I use more than anything these days. Every Nvidia card I've used with the Touring Base architecture, and even Pascal, has just rendered effects and presets so much faster. And I use a lot of motion graphics, as you guys can tell in my videos, and I have to render everything when I'm done. It's just NVIDIA is so much faster. So if you are a content creator, you might wanna go with the 1650 Super or the 1660, and the 1660 has just been cut in price. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And one last thing, guys, this is the same with comparing AMD to Intel is that AMD graphics cards do not hold their value as well as AMD does. It's the same where Intel on the used market is worth more than AMD, and I'm not sure why that is, but that's just the way it is. So you guys always need to consider that when buying stuff, because if you're someone that upgrades your system every couple years or every year, you're always buying something new, you guys always wanna buy the product that's gonna maintain the value the best, because AMD CPUs, I feel like these new Ryzen CPUs are not gonna hold their value as well as Intel down the road, uh, same with graphics cards. NVIDIA, when you see that green sticker that says NVIDIA, you know you're getting a good product. And you know, AMD, they have great products. They're just as good as NVIDIA at the lower tier end. You're gonna get way more back on your investment. Would I recommend this card? Absolutely, I think it's a great 1080p card. It performs just like the RX 580, but if you're spending that amount of money, I think going with the 1650 Super would be a much better move because you're getting that touring base architecture. That H.264 NVENC encoder that NVIDIA has is just awesome for streaming, video editing, rendering. If it's just for 1080p gaming, flip a coin, it's up to you. But if you're interested in doing some content creation, video editing, rendering, go with NVIDIA on this one. Trust me guys, it's just the much better play. All right guys, that about does it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. We got some really good content coming up in the next couple weeks. I'm gonna be doing a few retrospectives on a couple classic graphics cards. I just picked up the brand new uh, Intel 10th Gen i5, 10400 non-K edition. So we're gonna be doing another streaming build using this thing, see how well it comes. I haven't even opened it up yet. 
And um, I just really appreciate all the support of late guys. Thanks so much. Remember on your way out to that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up. And guys, remember I read and reply to every single comment. So if you have questions or concerns, please leave them in the comments down below. And you guys can follow me on Instagram at tech underscore 215 underscore. I'm on there all the time posting things about the channel. But I should be back in about a week with more tech content. Stay safe.